Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Katie and I make pictures and do stuff sometimes. In today's video, I'm working on a piece that's a little more uh, character design focused. I really wanted to reinvent Princess Peach and Daisy as badass RPG style uh, warriors. Well, Peach is the warrior, Daisy's kind of more of an archer slash rogue type character. Anyways, um, as usual, I've got my sketch down on a piece of watercolor paper and I'm doing the line work with a triple zero brush and today I'm using a dark mahogany uh, colored ink. I've listed all of my materials down in the description below. For this illustration, I actually took a lot of inspiration from a couple of Halloween costumes I did a couple of years ago with my roommate at the time. You can see the original in um, costumes on my Instagram if you scroll back a little bit. Anyways, uh, we ended up running a little short on time when we were making the costumes. She was working full time and super busy, um, and it was an especially hectic time for me. I was working close to full time hours while also going to school full time. I was in my final year of university and waist deep in midterm and my thesis. And to top it all off, I was moving literally the day after Halloween. So as a result, I really didn't get to put as much time into it as I wanted. Like, I really should have started months earlier than I did. Since I didn't get to put everything into the costume that I wanted to, I really wanted to complete the vision that I had in my head for it. So I used their costumes as a foundation and kind of built upon them to take them into a uh, kind of like a higher level of fantasy than I had time to do. One thing we both agreed on was that we really wished we had time to do Greaves. We both felt that just making Greaves would have really added a nice touch to the costumes and would have made them look a lot more finished. Aside from the Greaves, um, they both went through quite a few changes from the initial costume design to the final illustration. For Peach's costume, I think the biggest change was the transformation of the bodice. I ended up giving it a lot more structure. I think Daisy probably went through the most changes though. I kind of wanted to do like an archer Daisy for my costume, but I didn't really have time to make a bow or any kind of weapon at all for that matter. So I kind of went the lazy route and I just turned her into like a brawler kind of character. Um, so I was excited to finally design the piranha plant bow of my dreams. I also added um, a leather, leather bodice under the shirt rather than the bandeau I used for the original costume, and I just kind of made her armor a lot more sturdier than I had originally had time to make. If you've ever heard me talk about video games, like ever, especially games where you have even the slightest bit of flexibility with your character type, you probably know that 9 times out of 10, I will always play as an archer when I have the chance. Hell, I'm currently playing this tabletop RPG, it's called Bright Empire. Um, if you haven't heard of it, it's a sci-fi game that takes place 10,000 years after humans die out. There are guns for days, literally nobody is walking around with a bow, except for me. Um, I'm a Kaltoran mechanic with a torque bow. I was so pumped when I found out about Horizon Zero Dawn. The main character is literally just my fragged character. It honestly just, it looks like everything that I want in a game. Uh, but I don't have a PS4 and I'm positive that I will not be getting one. Um, I'm mostly doing PC gaming lately, but I have a feeling that my computer probably wouldn't survive a PS4 emulator. Just a, just a hunch. This is one of those pieces where I slacked the heck off and didn't do a color study first. I thought that since most of the work was already done for me, shout out to Nintendo, I didn't really need to put a lot of work into fil figuring out my color scheme ahead of time. And as a result, I actually ended up taking like a three day break from this piece while I figured out what color to make that stupid Koopa shell that they're standing on. More about that later because that was a frustrating experience for more reasons than one. Um, but whenever I'm not 100% sure about my color scheme and I don't feel like doing a color study, I always start with the colors I know need to be there. And for the uh, um, areas that I'm not sure about, I kind of let them simmer in my mind while I do the areas I've decided on, and then I just work out what will fit with those colors afterwards. Um, but doing color studies are generally a good practice. I did them all through university, and it did 
definitely strengthen my work. I should get back into the habit of doing things like that, um, doing more studies in general, whether it's uh, color studies, anatomy studies. If you've been following my Instagram, you've probably noticed that I've been doing quite a few hand studies lately. It's very, very easy for me to do them at work um, just because it's there's a lot of time in between calls and I have a great reference right in front of me. So it's very easy to do hand studies. <laughs> Back on the topic of archery for a moment and video games, um, I can only really think of one game in which I had the option to play as an archer and I chose something else. When I played Dragon Age Origins, I put in around 10 to 15 hours of gameplay as an archer then I restarted and played as a mage instead because the archers in Dragon Age Origins were so terrible. Oh my god. They were just so weak and their abilities were totally useless. They do get way better in the other game source, so I was very relieved about that. If I don't have the option to play as an archer, I'll usually go for like uh, an offensive mage type character. Uh, I really like characters that have uh, ranged attacks especially, so... Mage is a good secondary option for me. What games are people playing lately? What are the kids into these days? I feel like I'm always kind of behind on the times when it comes to video games. Mostly because I don't love the idea of spending such a massive chunk of money on the next-gen consoles that just kind of become obsolete in a few years when the next one comes out. I know with PC gaming, um, I should be keeping up to date on the parts to make sure that everything runs smoothly and continues to run smoothly, but, like, I don't. But th things are fine. Things are fine. I get by. Um, anyways, if that is your thing, like, all the power to you, I'm just really cheap when it comes to games, and that's 100% on me. Almost all of the games I played in the past year were either bought during a Steam sale or borrowed from a friend. I feel like there's also lots of really great games out there that aren't necessarily the latest thing. And I'm okay with not being super tuned into the very most recent game. Although I do really want to play Breath of the Wild. Oh man, I'm just waiting for Better to Emulator to come out for it. And then I am on it. It looks so beautiful. But like right now, I'm playing Skyward Sword. It's new ish but not that new as i say this i'm realizing it came out like six years ago or something like i thought it was hilarious when they announced that they were releasing skyrim for the nintendo switch because it's like it's pretty old and um, i just looked it up they came out like a week apart god i am too old for this shit um skyward sword is really good though i'm enjoying it i have my like nick nitpicky bits uh, like, why is flying so fucking frustrating? I hate having to drop into the portal to go to the surface. I miss, like, every single time I think I'm close enough, and I never am. Uh, and then there's the fact that I can just never get the sword to go where I want it to go. Like, there's lots of enemies where you have to uh, slash your sword in a very specific way, and I just can't get it to register with the direction I am moving my hand in. So that's kind of frustrating too, but I feel like most of that is really just like user error kind of thing. Like I don't think that's really the fault of the game. So as I approach the painting of the graph background, I kind of want to talk a little about owning your mistakes and making them work. As I mentioned, I took a three day break while I decided on what color to paint the Koopa shell. I thought red might provide a nice mid-tone between the orange and the pink and that would create a nice harmony, but doing a green shell would tie in really nicely with the bow because I don't have green anywhere else in the painting. Um, but blue could also look nice with the little pops and their jewelry and their eyes and just generally add a nice contrast to the piece. I ended up going with green, but I toned it down with uh, bits of red and blue so it wasn't so in your face and so it ended up being a little more harmonious with the other, other colors. That wasn't a mistake. I stand by that choice. Um, the mistake came when I put down the color. I actually didn't end up filming it. Uh, that's what I'm telling you about it now, and that's probably for the better because it was kind of a mess. Um, I'm not sure if I accidentally mixed in a little bit of stray white gouache that was hanging out on my palette, or if I actually just 
haven't painted such a large flat area with the uh, viridian green it was almost straight from the tube you can see it now it's so streaky it would not go flat um it had this weird consistency almost as though it was separating um i'm honestly not sure what it was i really need to do some more tests i think um the only thing that really helped was adding other colors to it to tone it down. I wasn't really able to um, add more Viridian Green on top. That wasn't really helping at all. Um, but um, yeah, all of the other colors went down fine. So it was just the green for some reason. But I think with the right br uh, brushwork, I was able to play it off more as texture on the shell than anything else. And it ended up looking all right. Um, but I really spent more time on that shell than I'd like to admit, just trying to get it to work. So I was more than happy to dilute a little bit of gouache and add some semi-transparent smoke drifting across the foreground and framing the piece, which you'll see in a minute or so. Now for the background. I wanted to do like a darker, cloudy slash smoky environment. Sorry the auto contrast on my camera is going nuts right now and flickering every time I move my arm back and forth. Um, but after putting down my base coat, which is mostly Payne's Grey, with bits of ultramarine and yellow ochre blended in, um, I went back and concentrated more of the grey and the blue towards the top of the piece. And I just kind of gradually worked it down um, to start to transition from the grey sky to the spooky dark clouds overhead. Um, and then I go back and forth with watercolor and white gouache to get the effect of the clouds and the smoke. I actually use a very similar technique in the background of my Kiki's Delivery Service piece um, to do the clouds. The only difference being that in the Kiki's Delivery Service illustration, I just used water to dilute the gouache and to feather it out. Um, but in this piece, I'm actually going to be using uh, more Payne's Grey to pull darker shades out of the clouds uh, while I simultaneously feather them out and add more depth to the sky that way. And as I so often do, I forgot to film the highlighting portion of this piece. This time, I just used a white gel pen to pick out the highlights. You'll see when I put the image at the end. Uh, sometimes I'll also use gouache, but I was just really feeling the gel pen this time. Uh, that's about it for this piece really. With May coming up, I'm really looking forward to doing Mer May. Um, so hopefully I'll be releasing a lot of content next month. I have something kind of fun planned, so I'm really excited. Uh, since I'll be putting out a lot more videos for Mer May, I probably won't be doing voiceovers for every single one. Uh, especially since I'm planning on making them much shorter than my usual videos. I also just received my very first order from Society6. I just really wanted to test out some of the products and see how well my art translated to those products. They also have sales quite often, so if I can work up the courage to post a video with my face in it, you can look forward to seeing that soon too. And here's the finished piece. As usual, I spent a bit of quality time with it in Photoshop to further enhance that dark sky. If you want to see more of my work, make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. You can also find me on my website at katieaddison.com, Society6 under the name Katie Addison, and on Instagram at katieaddisondraws. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.